Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us again. We're looking at some uh, problems in Newton's third law. This one's going to be our boxes problem, or really a problem that deals with the concept of contact force. Uh, we talked about how Newton's third law is. Um, it, it's the idea of one force in one direction creates another force in the opposite direction. So that if you have two people, let's say, pushing on each other's hands, um, they both feel the same force, just in an opposite direction. Like, for example, right now, um, Pushing my two hands together, whether my hands go that way or this way or stay stationary, it doesn't matter. Both of my hands are feeling the exact same force that is being exerted between them. That's the idea of the contact force and the, our application of Newton's third law. So here we have um, a couple boxes that are sort of joined together and one force is added to them. Uh, let's see here. Change my colors right here. So we have one force of 20 newtons being applied to these these boxes. So we'll just say, um, well, we'll just say 20 newtons is being applied from the outside for now. Like maybe somebody's hand is pushing these boxes, um, or so forth. Uh, we're told that one of the boxes is 10 newtons. And so in fact, I'm going to write that right now. Mass one is 10. New I'm sorry, uh, not newtons, kilograms, right? Didn't sound right. And mass two is five. It's supposed to be an equals sign there. I don't know what that is. Equals five kilograms. <clears throat> and um, we're told that there is an external force of 20 newtons. Okay. Um, equals 20 newtons. But I'm going to give a special designation to this. Because not only is this the um, the only external force, but it's really the only force acting on the entire system. In fact, question A says, what is the acceleration of the boxes? That is plural. That is to say, why can't we just think of this as one big system? Maybe, maybe it's not two boxes after all. Maybe it's just one big box that's like oblong shaped, you know? So in that case, we could call this, or we can think of this as not just some random outside force, but really we can think of it as the net force on the system. It's the net force on the system, S-Y-S. And I just kind of abbreviate it that way to indicate uh, the whole thing, not just box one, not just box two, but the whole thing. Now in reality, we have these two boxes and we have a contact force in between them right there. And um, we're going to find out what that is in part B. But right now we want to think of this as one big system. Okay, and the net force on the system from the outside is 20 newtons. There are some internal forces. There are these contact forces acting between the boxes. Um, but they're not from the outside, they're within the system, so we can kind of ignore them for now. The one single force that exi exists from the outside is that 20 Newton force uh, acting on the entire system. Okay, well part A says, what is the acceleration of the boxes? Or you could think of that as being uh, A asking us, what is the acceleration of the system? What we wanna find out. Okay, well we know the net force on the system and we want to find the acceleration system. Uh, should we be able to know the mass of the system? And the answer is, well, yes, we should know that. We should be able to figure that out already because um, we know mass of one and mass two, that would be the mass of the whole system. So we should be able to write this. The net force on the system is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system, which should enable us to solve for the mass for the acceleration of the system. We know that mass of the system is mass one plus mass two. So why can't we just set it up like this? So the acceleration of the system equals the net force, net force on the system. I told you my, my sigmas right here don't look very good. They look like backwards threes. Um, divided by the mass of the system. Okay, simple enough. We're on our way to solving for part A already. Acceleration of the system, by the way, that is a vector. 
Um, and we're going to see that it, the acceleration of the system is going to be in the same direction as the net force on the system. That's why these have vector arrows over them. The acceleration and the net force are going to be in the same direction. Um, the net force on the system, what is it? 20 newtons, right? Divided by what's the total mass of the system? That would be 10 newtons, not newtons, ah, 10 kilograms plus 5 kilograms. So what would that be for our acceleration? 20 divided by 15. I can do that in my head. I did it wrong in the calculator anyway. That should be 1.3. 1.3 meters per second squared. That's our acceleration of the boxes, plural, or you could say of the whole system. Because we know the net force on the system is this right here. We know the mass of the whole system. That's simply the acceleration of the system. And that's it. Now part B, we have to think about a little more. Part B is asking us, what is the contact force between the two boxes? That's like saying, what force exerts itself from box one to box two and box two to box one? In fact, let's rewrite these um, forces like this. I'm gonna call this force box one acting on box two, because this is box one right here and this is box two. And I'm going to call this force two acting on box one. All right, so we want to know the contact force between the boxes here. <clears throat> well, these are both equal. They're equal but opposite. The magnitudes are equal. So we could either take box one and solve for the, the force that it's feeling from box two or take box two and find the force that it's feeling from box one. But let's draw each one out separately and see which one would be easier to do. Box two, it looks like, has two forces acting on it. It has the net force on the system, that's that 20 newtons, plus it's got the force from box two, I'm, I'm sorry, this is all box one. This is box one, sorry, this big one right here. It's got the net force acting on the outside plus the, the force from two acting on it. Box two is smaller and it only has one force acting on it. It's got the one force that is the pushing force or the contact force from box one acting on it, act one acting on box two. Well, from this it looks like the box two would be easier to solve for because there's only one force involved. So for box two, we're gonna write it like this. For box two, the net force on box two, and this is, this is important here, the net force, or really the only force acting on box two, is that contact force, the force from box one that's pushing it, okay? This is gonna be a big deal right here. The net force on box two, it, it can be described as the only force that matters or, or the only force at all. However, Newton's second law has told us that the net force on box two can also be written as the mass of box two times the acceleration of box two, right? That looks like an R there. That looks even worse. Two, there we go. So what that means is if these are equal, equal, then that means we can set them equal to each other. That's like saying the contact force, force from one pushing onto two, is gonna be equal to the mass of box two times the acceleration of box two, okay? This right here is what we wanna solve for. Okay, we wanna know what that contact force between the two boxes actually is. Well, we're just using box two as the example to find out how hard one is pushing on it. And we can do that by taking the mass of box two times the acceleration of box two. Now, we just sol solved it for a minute ago, the acceleration of the whole system. Why did I do that? Um, right there. The acceleration of the whole system is 1.3 meters per second squared. But box two is part of that system 
So that means that also is the acceleration of box two. So we can say this, that the net force, or sorry, well, the net force, which is the contact force on box two, is the mass of box two. We know that is 5.0 kilograms times the acceleration of box two, which is the acceleration of that whole system, 1.3 meters per second squared. So five times 1.3, that gives me 6.5 newtons. 6.5 newtons, that is the contact force between the two boxes. So box one is pushing on box two with 6.5 newtons this way. Box two is pushing back on box one with 6.5 newtons and that's what we just solved for. Right there, that's the contact force. And that's our answer for part B. So this right here, this um, stating the net force two different ways and then setting them equal to each other is going to be very critical to solving these problems. This that I just boxed right here is, um, it's going to be a big deal and that's going to be the key to solving this kind of problem. But for right now, um, hopefully that was clear and that it made sense to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if, uh, if not, um, keep up the good work and I'll see you soon in class.